We'll begin our base rover workflow by setting up the Battle Flex Extreme, acting as the base over a point, in this case just outside of our office adjacent to the Scottsdale Airport in the outdoor furnace we'd like to call home, Arizona. This can be a previously known location with the coordinates preloaded onto your device, or you can record a new point to use as your reference point. We recommend shooting over a point that offers an open sky view away from obstructions, is in a safe place to avoid theft, and ideally over a monument with known coordinates. Ensure your radio is mounted to the field pole securely, and power on your flex by depressing the power button for a handful of seconds. When you begin to see the LEDs start to flash on the flex, power on your radio, and you should see more flashing lights, your survey pole may look similar to a Christmas tree at this point. After you enjoy the light show for about 15 seconds while the hardware is booting, verify the flex is oriented perfectly vertical with your bubble level or the integrated tilt sensor on the flex. You're now ready to pull out your phone or tablet to start the process of completing your checklist for the first half of the setup process, the base. We'll switch over to our phone screen here and begin by selecting base from a correction mode. If you're interested in collecting a here reference point, you could increase your absolute accuracy by selecting RTK or Atlas L-Band from the list instead of SBAS to increase the quality of your recorded point. Your choice depending on the availability of internet at your location and your requirements of absolute versus relative accuracy. When the checklist appears, the top two steps should be completed already as we're using the Extreme Unlocked Flex, which is a requirement to activate base mode. Next, we'll confirm a pole height of 2 meters, which is the standard height of the pole that is included with the flex in our Pioneer package bundle. The following step in the checklist failed due to the flex either being tilted to the side or completely out of calibration, so we'll go ahead and calibrate it and continue through the list. You'll see that we skipped over the previous two steps, as we already have a GPS fix and a fully charged battery, so we don't have to risk losing our correction feed 2 miles from your base in the middle of nowhere. So the step we're on now, we want to choose our base reference point. We'll either choose a new point by tapping the blue capture button, as so, and taking a 5 second time point, or we can use a previously recorded known point instead that we uploaded onto our device. You can see our accuracy was 14 centimeters from this point. It's not quite good enough for us. Uh, we want to use our known point that is already well established. You can upload established coordinates that were previously post-processed or shot over for an extended period of time, such as a survey monument. Enter the name, lat, lawn, and altitude, but just to be sure to include the datum of the coordinates, whether it is WGS84, ITRF, 98 through 2011, or other from the list. Alternatively, you can enter coordinates manually or use the receiver to record an instant point to use as a reference by tapping the plus icon next to location. Tap the Use Current Location button and notice how the datum is filled in automatically when we record our point. For this demonstration though, we're going to use a known point from our list as a reference. Now we just need to pair the flex to the radio via Bluetooth and we're ready to activate base mode. You can verify your radio is connected successfully to the base after completing the pairing process when the Bluetooth indicator starts blinking green. You can also verify this by viewing the list of paired devices on the Flex UI. For subsequent connections, the radio will connect to the paired Flex automatically. Now that the radio is connected, we can complete the checklist and begin transmitting corrections. You can confirm that the data is being transmitted out by viewing the status section at the bottom of the screen and verify the number of packets and kilobytes are increasing. So at this moment, I'm sure a few of you are thinking you'd like the option to start the base without the use of a connected mobile device. Fear not, we have replicated the checklist process on the Battle Flex UI for use as a backup in case your phone runs out of battery, overheats, gets misplaced, or you simply don't feel like introducing another piece of equipment to the workflow. We walk through the same steps on the Flex's transflective display as we did on our app, and we'll be up and running. Begin by selecting base from the GNSS corrections options, and the first step of verifying connection to the radio and satellites is already checked. Next, we'll confirm we're using a 2 meter survey pole and evaluate that the flex's tilt is within our accepted tolerance. Finally, we'll select whether or not we want to use a previously recorded location, a known or here point, and whether it's uh, going to be an RTK or SFAS, you know, it just depends on what correction services we have available at the time. We're going to use a known point and then we'll be able to start our base. So this will transfer us back to that base screen with the three screens with all the metadata we need, sort of uh, locks us in there. 
And uh, the, so when we get to the screen, the large number at the bottom represents the amount of bytes that have been transmitted by your radio. So as long as the number is increasing, your base is working as intended. While the flex is in base mode, it is also recording a raw log in a Rhinex file that can be post-processed using a program like Opus offered by the NGS. Stopping the base early will give a warning as Opus requires a 15 minute file at minimum to submit to their service. Uh, both the raw log and any events that occur while you're using the base will automatically be saved once you exit out of base mode. So our base is currently transmitting corrections but nobody's receiving them. Let's fix that by grabbing our second survey poll with our battle flex that's extreme unlocked with a 24 hour token. Don't worry about the point you set up on with the rover since we're just going to move it around anyway. Just ensure you're within Bluetooth range of your mobile device, approximately 10 meters or so. We'll power on our flex and radio just like before with the base. Ensure that you connect to the radio that has not already been connected to the base as you'll probably see both on your parent screen and pull out your mobile device to complete the second half of the checklist. You might recognize the screen from earlier with a few slight alterations. So we're back over here on the phone. We're just going to go back to correction mode just like before, but this time we're going to select rover instead of base. So we pop open the rover checklist. Uh, you can see that it's pretty similar workflow. We're going to confirm our pole height since we've already connected to our radio. That radio is speaking to our base since we're on the same channel. And we can actually select that panel right there. And we'll start seeing the metadata from the base. So you can see the name of the flex that you're connected to as the base, what firmware it's running, the battery of both the radio and the flex, as well as what you're using for the reference point, lat, lawn, and datum. So you can see our flex is in extreme mode. We activated a token to use this, and we can just click activate rover mode. And now we're receiving corrections from our base. Just like the base, you can see the packets at the bottom there, they're increasing. Just this time we're receiving rather than transmitting them. You should see a green light on your radio instead of a red uh, as you're re receiving corrections instead of sending them out. And just like the base, we have a few rover exclusive screens that you can scroll through. If you look back at the app, you'll see that our flex is now indicated as a rover so you don't get the two mixed up. Finally, if we do tilt the base a little bit, we'll get a notification, we'll have an error, we'll stop receiving corrections, and this will be noted on our metadata once we export all the data off the base. So now that we've got our base established and transmitting, our rover connected to the radio set to the same channel as the base, we're prepared to go off and complete our survey. Thanks.